This week on Golf Destination, we visit the largest golf dinner in the United States, the We Met Scholarship Fund's annual dinner. We visit the Preserve Sporting Club and residences. Darren Clark offers a playing tip from the Bahamas. Christina Ritchie is in Arizona and offers help with our turn. Golf Destination is next. Welcome to Golf Destination. I'm your host, Meredith Gorman, coming to you from the sociable DGI communication studios just outside of Boston. The We Met Scholarship Fund hosts their annual dinner, which is the largest golf dinner in the country. It's a special night, and this year's honoree, Ernie Els, was one of the many highlights of the evening. Thank you again for joining us tonight as we continue the great tradition of honoring those in the game of golf who have left their mark not only in the golf course but off the golf course. We Met Fund has been fortunate to honor the greats in the game for the past 25 years and tonight he adds to that story. This event is more than just a fundraiser. This is a part of our golf culture in uh, Massachusetts and, uh, and it's fun. Francis We Met Scholarship Fund is a need-based college scholarship for young men and women that work on Massachusetts golf courses. They work for two years and they can go to the school of their choosing and uh, our awards um, help them and it's renewable over four years. There's 1,400 people here tonight. It's a, it's a real celebration of golf. It's a celebration of philanthropy, celebration of Ernie Els and so many volunteers and donors who just want to help we met scholars. I'm not sure how many kids have come through your program, Amazing. but it's thousands, it seems like, and it's been going for many years, and there's such a great story behind it, you know, with Eddie Lowry and uh, Francis we met, you know, doing what they did back in 1913, and here we are, a hundred and something years later, <laughs> and, uh, and that story still continues, and you've created something around it, which is brilliant. brilliant. The 2023 student speaker, Anthony Adelizzi, shared his inspiring story. The fund then surprised Anthony at the podium with a scholarship meeting 100% of his financial need. Here is his story. the biggest problem you know we had um, a plan we had an educational advocate telling him this is what he needs this is what you know would work well for him but it, sometimes you couldn't get those you couldn't get those services and that's what he really needed that and I think trying to make friends make friends he had a lot of trouble he was by make himself friends. most of the time when you're different you know they kind of know I don't know how they know but when they do know it's it's challenging. Well, obviously, I've started out when I was five with diagnosis, and it's just been an up, it's been, always been an uphill battle, but I feel like it's something that's gonna be there for the rest of my life, and I can learn how to cope with it. I fell in love with golf when I first picked it up when I was three years old. The first thing I love about golf is the game of honesty. It teaches a very big life skill throughout life, not just on the course, but off the course. I also love that, it, um, obviously, I've won so many times, but, but, but the thing is, this game has never been perfected by anybody. I don't think it ever will be. We got him involved with a, uh, a local pro named Bob Miller, and Bob did a lot of one-on-one -on -one with him. He realized he had learning disabilities, gave him different ways to do the swing. For example, turning rotation. He'd put him in a, um, an office chair that rotated, and he'd say, swing it. Swing it, that's what I want you to do. And he was excellent, and he's been his coach and mentor his whole life. Anthony's parents uh, started Anthony to golf when he was like three and a half years old. Um, you know, here and, you know, he had some like plastic clubs and got going, but he, it, even at that age, he, he just really seemed to have, uh, just had a blast hitting, hitting golf balls and, and course that extended on through the present day. Oh, golf in high school was great for him. I mean, he loved it. He had never done the competitive golf before. 
Um, he just loved it. And there was a camaraderie with a few of the kids. They all have something in common. They all share with each other different techniques that they learn. So that was good for him. That setting was ideal. After my first loss, my dad came over to me and said, and he wanted to know if I, I was sitting in the locker room. I was upset, obviously, because I lost. But I didn't understand at the time how what this game is about. And that's always an aha moment. But my mom and dad came in. They told me, they told me it's okay. They said, don't put the clubs down. You are a good player. You just, you just, you just gotta go. You just gotta find him again. Go find that good player. So I first met Anthony in 2018. It was my first year as the head pro at Hyannis Port and Anthony applied to work outside with us. Anthony was always at the front door like a hawk, watching what was going on, who was arriving, who was on property, and any person who went up to go in or out of the pro shop, didn't matter who they were, he'd open the door, ask them how their day was. And that's something that we'll always remember Anthony for. When Anthony was accepted into Methodist and we got the letter, we were all thrilled, so happy. When I found that I got into Methodist, which is one of the toughest PGM programs to get into in the country, I was ecstatic. I was very happy, my Bob was very happy, my parents were happy, and I feel like it's also, and I've heard it's the Harvard of golf, so it's really a great place to go to. He didn't wait to come in to tell me, I'll say that. He gave me a phone call as soon as he found out, and it was fun to be able to share that news with him. Golf was a gift to him, to Anthony. Um, I don't know where, excuse me, Anthony would have been without the game of golf. Um, he's done a remarkable job. He's, he's, his goal now is to be a, you know, a class A PGA professional. There's no doubt in my mind that he'll achieve those goals. And it's great to see the diversity that now he will be able to offer to many other people um, who may have been a little bit beset with some of the challenges that he's had in his young life. In terms of Anthony being a WeMet Scholar and now being the, the speaker here at the banquet is amazing. Um, to see the growth that he's had for over the four years that we worked together, and now even more so the growth that he's had going down to Methodist um, has been very impactful for everyone that's gotten to know him over time. Uh, he's a very positive person, and I think he embodies everything that the WeMet Fund looks for in their scholars. I am most proud of Anthony for the man that he has become. Uh, he had a lot of challenges along the way, a lot of hurdles, um, and he was able to do it. He's at a college that he always wanted to be at and very happy for everything he has accomplished thus far. Up next, we visit a four season club with 3,500 acres, plus a tiny bit more. When Golf Destination, presented by Gosling's of Bermuda, continues. Golf Destination is brought to you by Goslings of Bermuda. Dare to be happy. Duca del Cosma, Italian golf evolution. Avidia Bank, honest to goodness. The Preserve Sporting Club and Residences. Unparalleled luxury meets the great outdoors. Puka, be original. Robert Graham, be the shout, not the echo. Club Benchmarking, your partner on the path to data-driven leadership. For eight generations, the Goslings family has made it their goal to perfect the art of blending and aging rum. They let go of control of this process and let Mother Nature take the reins on the open ocean. The voyage starts by filling once-used bourbon barrels with a proprietary blend of aged, dark Bermuda rums. The stormy seas and air have an extraordinary effect on the blend. The result, Gosling Spirited Seas, a generous gift from the wild Atlantic Ocean. Club Benchmarking Capital Reserve Study arms you with a precise chronological roadmap of capital requirements and associated costs. Our process includes a thorough financial analysis, in-depth staff interviews, and an on-site inspection to evaluate, document and prioritize your club's capital repair and replacement requirements over a rolling 20-year timeline. Club Benchmarking, your partner on the path to data-driven leadership. Welcome to the most amenities-rich sporting club in North America, the Preserve. 3,500 splendid acres. Come stay at the Preserve's hotel with its dazzling five stars. Come dine in a magical hobbit house. Come play, shooting sports, indoor and out, championship golf, horseback adventures, and so much more. You deserve the preserve. 
Book your ultimate luxury experience today. Wait, hats? They're all wearing hats? What are you doing with this stupid visor? You just bought the visor because you thought people at places like this wear visors. Turns out they don't. No one wears visors. They're wearing hats. You are the only one wearing a visor. A video bank can't make you comfortable with your golf outfit, but we can make you comfortable with your financial life. I like hat. Golf Destination is brought to you in part by Goslings of Bermuda. Dare to be happy. Welcome back to Golf Destination. I'm Meredith Gorman here at the Sociable DGI Communication Studios. The Preserve Sporting Club and Residences in South County, Rhode Island is a private four season destination. The unique par three executive course is a fun way to spend a day. The first hole is a distance of 147 yards and starts you on the highest point of the golf course. Miss it left and you will have a difficult up and down. The second hole measures 179 yards and plays all downhill. The green is bisected with a large swale and missing it left will put you in a bunker 15 feet below the putting surface. The third hole measures 165 yards and requires a shot over a lower pond. Don't be short and right or you'll find the sand or worse. The fourth hole is a 163 yard shot resting in a lower meadow you could roll it on, but be wary of the small mitt bunker awaiting miss hit shots. The fifth plays a little bit longer than the 150 yards suggest. The green has many pin locations. The sixth plays only 136 yards, but you need to hit the correct spot on the green as it slopes right to left and it has a dinner table plateau at the upper right corner. The seventh hole is 177 yards uphill and will test your nerves. The eighth hole measures 162 yards and offers an optical illusion that suggests it is uphill when it is really played along a level plane. You finish the front side on the 161 yard downhill nine. Bunkers protect both sides of the screen. We begin the back nine on the shortest hole on the golf course at 128 yards. It offers a bench green and trouble on both sides. The 11 stretches out to 240 yards. A slight draw is the favored ball flight to this green. The 12th is a challenging 190 yards. Large boulders protrude from the green fronting pond. The green has some movement on it. The 13th reads 178 yards, but select a half a club more because the green works upward. A deep bunker grabs balls missed left. The 14th is a short hole at 140 yards. A classic strip bunker mirrors a large ledge outcrop on the left while a deep pot bunker protects the right side. The 15th plays downhill to a tabletop green. Miss hit shots may get unfortunate kicks. 16 is a challenging hole playing over 200 yards. Fly the ball to the green as danger surrounds this large green. The 17th is set in a natural meadow. The green is large and plays a little uphill. The 18th is a fun birdie hole and a great way to finish your match. The green is narrow and measures 130 feet from front to back. So that is the preserve. But wait, you say your match is tied? The playoff hole next to the clubhouse is our favorite hole on the course. It plays about 160 yards downhill over a pond fronting the green. It's the deciding factor in many matches. The Preserve Sporting Club and Residences is private with membership and real estate opportunities available as well as stay and play packages for the public. One of the offerings are tiny homes. The Preserve Sporting Club and Residences tiny homes are inspired by nature. The designer tiny homes on Blueberry Hill combine minimalistic modern design with smart efficiencies and luxury touches. Thank you. 
They feature floor plans that maximize every inch. Fashionably integrated storage options. Classic design from a leading architect. Perfect for a primary residence, leisurely getaway home, a deluxe mother-in-law suite, a weekend stay, or a downsize with hand-picked amenities. Designer tiny homes are the choice for world-class luxury living. These stylish homes also offer a one-of-a-kind 3,500-acre backyard with four seasons of incredible activities, luxury amenities, and a legacy to last generations. These wonderful tiny homes also offer its owners main lodge access, backyard access all year round, special events, on-site dining, outdoor pool, and so much more. Visit PreserveSportingClub.com for more information. Next, you'll get a tip that will help turn your golf game around when Golf Destination, presented by Gosling's of Bermuda, continues. For eight generations, the Goslings family has made it their goal to perfect the art of blending and aging rum. For the first time, they let go of control of this process and let Mother Nature take the reins on the open ocean. The voyage starts by filling once-used bourbon barrels with a proprietary blend of aged dark Bermuda rums. The barrels are loaded onto the MV Oleander, and the rum ages for another year at sea, traveling back and forth from Bermuda to the Mid-Atlantic. Extreme changes in temperature force the wooden barrels to expand in warmer climates and contract in colder temperatures. The rum interacts with the charred American white oak over every wave and change in weather, extracting all the barrel's flavor. The result is an elegant and complex rum with an oaky nose, hints of salted caramel, and luscious spice for a smooth finish. Gosling Spirited Seas, a generous gift from the wild Atlantic Ocean. Club Benchmarking Capital Reserve Study arms you with a precise chronological roadmap of capital requirements and associated costs. Our process includes a thorough financial analysis, in-depth staff interviews, and an on-site inspection to evaluate, document, and prioritize your club's capital repair and replacement requirements over a rolling 20-year timeline. Club Benchmarking, your partner on the path to data-driven leadership. Club Benchmarking, your partner on the path to data-driven leadership. Hello and welcome back to Golf Destination. I'm your host Meredith Gorman from the sociable DGI Communication Studios just outside of Boston. Now let's venture out to Arizona where PGA professional Christina Ritchie helps with our turn. Hey guys, Christina Ritchie. If you want more pars, but you really struggle getting the ball airborne, you don't have a lot of distance, especially from the fairway. That's your pain point, all right? You chunk it, your balls are low, no fun, no confidence. So I find players go off where they don't get distance or their ball doesn't get airborne or they even chunk it or blade it, is they're just using their arms, all right? And the back foot's stuck in cement, so they're not, you're not using your body. So you really want to use your body and get to a full finish. You got to swing all the way through, all right? So your belly button is left of the target. 
and this shoulder is wrapped all the way around. All right. Now I know what you're thinking. Christina, I, I'm not that flexible. It really has nothing to do with mobility. It has everything to do with your back leg. All right, where players go off is because they don't move it, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't get to a finish. I'm, I'm, I'm so immobile. I've lost all my flexibility. And it's really this back foot. <laughs> so once I get players to move it, even pick it up, pick it up and flip it so they can get their belt line left of the target line, Immediately they get 10, 15, 20 more yards. It's crazy. Players are like, well, I hit the ball. What does the finish matter? Well, believe it or not, the max speed is from the ball forward. So if you're finishing here, which is kind of before the ball, right, you're not really generating enough club head speed. But if you're increasing your speed, so from the top of your backs, when you're increasing your speed, so the speed is out in front of the ball, you're going to get a lot more distance. And with the PXG 0211Z hybrid iron, that's going to make your job of getting that ball airborne effortless. I'm only asking you to get to a finish. All right, so use your body and get to a finish. And you're going to be amazed how far the ball goes. Golf legend Darren Clark joins us next from the Abaco Club in the Bahamas when Golf Destination, presented by Gosling's of Bermuda, returns. Golf Destination is brought to you in part by Gosling's of Bermuda. Dare to be happy. Welcome back to Golf Destination, presented by Gosling's of Bermuda. I'm Meredith Gorman from the sociable DJI Communication Studios just outside of Boston. Trade winds and tropical breezes sound nice, but do you know how to play in those conditions? Thankfully, Abaco Club resident Darren Clark does, and he offers his advice. We're here in the 17th hole at the Abaco Club in Winding Bay. Beautiful par three, downhill, but as it is the norm, the wind is, is coming back against today, so the yardage is 167, but it's going to play a little bit longer because of that wind coming against. So I've got a six iron here, which normally goes about 185 yards. So into the wind, I do a couple of things. One is that I move the ball fractionally back in my stance. And number two, I try to make sure that this, the club, my hands are just leading the club head a little bit more. So I'll deal off it. So I'll have a little bit more control of keeping that ball low, almost like a punch shot into the wind. But at the same time, my body keeps rotating all the time. So let me see if we can do it here. Sometimes it's hard with the backdrop is as nice as this to actually try and hit a decent shot. But let me see what I can do. So six iron, ball back in the stance a little bit. Normal swing, keep rotating. I'll try and do something like that. That would be a very good one when I'm playing with all my boys here because it would probably would make a few, a little bit of cash or maybe a few collect lights off. So, play at 17. You pushed your tee shot, did a decent shot, kicked off this slope. Our course super here, Matt DeMace has put in this nice little sandy area just to catch a few people. So you're in here, bunker shot, basically. Waste area, but you play it like a bunker shot. How do you play a bunker shot? Number one, I see people back it up on it all the time, trying to help it, trying to scoop a bit like pitching. First thing in bunkers is you always want the majority of your weight on the left-hand side because it needs to be a descending blow coming into the golf ball. But people try and think that they've got to connect the golf ball. We don't. You imagine if the ball's sitting in the middle of a little square like that, the ball's in here. What I try and do is try and remove the square of sand. So I'm hitting sometimes an inch, sometimes an inch and a half behind the ball down into the sand with some speed. I'm never ever trying to hit the ball first when it comes out of a bunker. Sometimes we'll get closer to it if we need to, to put extra spin on it. But again, that's because we practice them all the time. But rule of thumb, wait forward, try and remove that box of sand from around the golf ball. So, let me put it over here. See if I can give you a little bit of a demonstration. So, wait forward. Keep my speed up. Remove that little box of sand.
something like that. Now it's time to go and have a beer. We hope you enjoyed today's show, and if you want more information, visit our online hub at golfdestination.tv. It has all of our social media channels and broadcast schedule. Once again, I'm Meredith Foreman. Thanks for joining us. Golf Destination is brought to you by Goslings of Bermuda. Dare to be happy. Duca del Cosma. Italian golf evolution. Avidia Bank. Honest to goodness. The Preserve Sporting Club and Residences. Unparalleled luxury meets the great outdoors. Puka, be original. Robert Graham, be the shout, not the echo. Club Benchmarking, your partner on the path to data-driven leadership.